and welcome to another episode of Get Wedding Ready with me, Ramanola. Today I'm going to be talking to you about something really educated, hence the glasses. I'm going to be talking to you about how to create your wedding budget. So we're going to be talking numbers in this video and I want to make sure that by the end of this video you know how to create a wedding budget, how to stay on top of your wedding budget, not spending so much money, um, the things you need to do before you start your wedding budget and how to create the wedding budget itself. So let's get straight into it. I think this glasses makes me look a bit, yeah, I think I'm going to take this off. So the first thing you want to do when you get engaged, when you're thinking about creating a wedding budget, you know, when you're getting frustrated about numbers, is to think first of all who is sponsoring the wedding. Are you sponsoring the wedding? Are you, is your parents sponsoring the wedding? Or is your the king of your land sponsoring the wedding? Whoever is sponsoring the wedding, you need to know who is sponsoring your wedding. Once you got that out of the way, you need to decide how much can I realistically spend on this wedding. Take for example, if it's you and your partner who are sponsoring your wedding, you need to sit down as a couple and think, okay, how much do we have to spend on a wedding that is the money we can actually see which could be our savings or the salaries coming in or profits from businesses or you know money that should come in for example something you've invested in that should come in you know any other thing money that someone owes you does not count and money that someone tells you they're going to give you does not count you need to make sure you put on the table the money that you can see so now if your parents are sponsoring the wedding great they're going to ask you what is your budget you still need to sit down with your partner and think okay what kind of wedding do we want to have and depending on what kind of wedding we want to have and how many people we're going to invite how much do we think we can spend so you need to still go back to your family with a figure now don't get frustrated that's why i'm here to help let's get straight into creating that wedding budget so the best thing to do to create a, when creating a wedding budget is to have an Excel sheet. If you're not very good in Excel, find someone who's good in Excel or you know go to Google and you know type in how to use Excel. Excel is the best tool that can help you with you know your wedding budget. There are other tools like you know Microsoft Project, there are other really technical tools, but the best tool that you can use that can help you is Microsoft Excel. Now, the first thing you're going to do is create columns and the picture you can see on the screen right now the first column that you want to create is the, is the column with your description and in your description column you're going to put every single item that you're going to use for your wedding i'm talking your wedding venue all your vendors your makeup your shoe your hair your groomsman suits every single thing that is going to go into your wedding whether you're paying for it or not once you have the column of the description the next thing you want to do is put a column for the vendor or the person providing that service so that you can see it the next column should be an estimated price now an estimated price at the point of when you're starting your budget is the maximum price you are willing to spend on a service or on a product for example, take your wedding dress. The maximum price you might be willing to spend on your wedding dress is £2,500. The maximum price you're willing to spend on a venue, for example, might be £5,000. So that will be your estimate, the maximum amount you're willing to spend. Then the next column, we're going to have an actual. Your actual costs are when you've spoken to your vendor, when you've secured your vendor and they've given you a price, you put that price in your actual. Your actual cost should be cheaper than your estimate cost. And I'll come to that later. After your actual cost, the next thing you want to put in is a tracker. So you want to know whether it's completed, whether it's pending, or whether you know it's still open. So you want to track that service or track that product. And then the last column that you might want to put is some notes. For example, if you've booked your photographer, you know, you want to put in notes saying, you know, we're paying for his travel or we're paying for his accommodation. So anything that's really important for that vendor, you want to put in your notes. So let's go straight back to the columns and I'll give you a very good idea of how to fill in your wedding budget. The first column I have is photographer. And after photographer, the vendor I'm going to have is Adebayo Deru. And after putting Adebayo Deru, because I don't know how much Adebayo Deru charges, the maximum I'm willing to spend on photography is Two thousand pounds. So I put two thousand pounds there, and then I speak to the buyer and he sends me loads of packages, and I find a package that really, really suits me, and it's actually cheaper than my estimates. You know, the, it comes up to one thousand three fifty pounds. 
you put down 1350 pounds you're already saving you know over 700 pounds already and then the next column i'm going to put completed if i've sent back my contract and i've booked you know a day by day and then for my notes i'm going to you know put in the notes that i need to put in for example send an email with you know, all the important people so that he knows who to capture on the day you're going to do that for every single vendor that you're going to book and this is going to help you track your wedding from start to finish. Now this other by Daryl was just an example that is not how much he charges but I just wanted to use the example because I've worked with him and that was my wedding vendor. So if you're trying to track a product you're going to, you're going to put your wedding dress you're going to put the store or who you're getting a wedding dress from, the maximum you're willing to spend on your wedding dress, the actual cost when you get the cost of your wedding dress, whether you bought it or not, you're going to put booked or not booked, and then in your notes you might want to put pick up wedding dress um, or go for fitting, you know, at this date, pick up wedding dress at this date. Another thing to do is also to put in your notes deposits. So when you pay your wedding vendors, you are going to have deposits. So you need to make sure that you have, you know, a deposit in your notes so you know when your next deposit is due. So this is just a quick and easy way to create your wedding budget so quickly I'm going to give you tips on how to stay in line with your wedding budget so how to not go over your wedding budget the first tip I'm going to give you is to cut your coat according to your size you need to cut your coat according to your size you cannot be looking at Kim Kardashian's wedding if you're still living you know in a studio apartment with five other people come on you know so cut your coat according to your size make sure you don't run into debt because you want to have the wedding of life the people who come to have that wedding with you are going to go home on that day nobody's going to be there when you're soaking gary gary is cassava for my non-nigerian viewers by the way <laughs> okay so the next tip i'm going to give you on staying in line with your budget is list as many things as you can on your wedding budget list every even if it's eyelash even if to do your eyelash before list that because that's 55 pounds <laughs> and that is the cost list as many things as you can on your wedding budget my sister-in-law told me when we're getting married that wedding is like a bottomless pit you keep paying and paying and paying and paying if you don't list as much at least 90% of your items things will be creeping up you're going to remember oh I forgot to put my wedding shoe that's another cost oh I forgot the groomsman suit that's another cost oh I actually forgot we have to get drinks that's another cost so you need to make sure you sit down and put as many items as you can you know on your wedding budget next tip I'm going to give you for making sure that your wedding budget you don't go over your wedding budget is making sure your actual is less than your estimated cost Your actual cost should never, and I repeat, your actual cost should never surpass your estimated cost. If that happens, then you're running into debt because your wedding budget is set around your estimated cost. And if your actual cost come in higher than your estimated cost, you're going to run yourself into debt. So the fourth tip I'll give you is to learn how to say no. Learn how to say no. There's, honestly, when you're planning your wedding, you're going to want every single thing because you just you want your wedding to be beautiful so you're gonna want everything someone says oh there's sparkling lights you get it someone said there's someone who can mime you get it someone said there's a little child who dances and looks like Beyonce you get that as well people are gonna be telling you things and things it's for you to say no I don't need it at my wedding you can have it at your wedding you need to learn how to say no because if you don't you're gonna keep saying yes to everything I remember at my wedding I wanted a Krispy Kreme donut tower and when I look back, I'm like, thank you, Jesus, I didn't get that. Because, Bura, what were you thinking? What was the point of getting a Krispy Kreme donut tower? Who would have eaten it? But it looked beautiful, and I thought to get it. But thank God I didn't get it, because I said no. Last tip I'm going to give you, not going over your wedding budget, is closing your eyes. Literally, <laughs> close your eyes, because anywhere you go, you're going to see things that you'd want to get. When you're looking on Etsy, when you're looking on, you know, other things, there's so many things that you absolutely want to get and it will never stop. So learn to close your eyes. Literally, if you see a shop and you're about to go in, just come out. Like, don't go into the shop. Like, just, and if you see something online, just shut the browser window. Don't get it. Literally close your eyes to everything out there um, that you don't need for your wedding. So the last tip I'm going to give you is uh, make sure you download Etsy. Etsy is really, really good um, when you're planning your wedding because 
there's it's just like ebay's regular people who are you know selling items but these people are creative they're people who own shops things on etsy are things you don't really find anywhere they're really creative they're really um different um and you know they're really crafty and it's look, download etsy and thank me later um the next thing you want to have is make sure you have ebay ebay honestly saved my life for my wedding there's so many things that i got from ebay um i got my bouquet from ebay my bouquet is all the way there i got my you know my my wedding jewelry believe it or not i got it from ebay i got my crown from ebay but i've sold that so i got loads of stuff from ebay so make sure you download ebay and the other thing i would say is um follow as many wedding vendors as you can um this is really important because wedding vendors will always post promos and if they're having sample dresses or anything that's going to be on sale this will really help you or uh, you know to get on top of you know cheaper costs if you follow these wedding vendors and the last tip i'm just going to give you is this is the golden tip that i can give you from planning my wedding if anyone tells you they're going to give you money don't count that as part of your wedding because it's so tempting for you to say oh this person owes me money or that person is going to give me money and you say okay i'm going to get my shoe based on that money i'm being owed if it doesn't come in you're going to be frustrated so that's a golden tip i'm going to give you today make sure your wedding budget surrounds money you can actually see and not money that you're hoping will come in or you're hoping would you know surface so guys thank you so much for watching um this video i really hope it's helped someone you know start planning their wedding by all means ask me questions let me know you know if you have any questions if you have anything and i will answer them don't forget to like to comment to subscribe to me to see more videos and also yeah share show me some love and also i'll be back again so thank you guys so much and just you know stay on top of your wedding budget it's gonna be okay just close your eyes say no and make sure you only bank on money you can actually see so thank you guys for watching the video my name is Rora Manola bye